Hello and welcome back to the channel. I'm the Swipeful Architect, you can call me Liv. Now, for those who don't know, Minecraft Live wrapped up overnight with the 1.19 wild update announced with new features, new blocks and mobs slated to be added to the game in the middle of 2022. The mob vote also finished with the LA scheduled to be added to Minecraft 1.19 along with all the new features that I'll discuss into the video. Let's jump straight into it now. 1.19 is the wild update with changes coming to the swamp and further changes to caves announced last night during Minecraft Live. First up, the swamp. It's getting an entire overhaul. An entirely new biome called the Mangrove Swamp has been announced for the update. It's a variation of the traditional swamp with a new wood type, the mangrove wood. Uh, considering what mangroves are in the real world, it follows that they will probably be found along the coastlines or in low-lying areas around swamps. It could also be a denser swamp that is found in the middle of a larger swamp biome, or it might just be another biome that generates like everything else in Minecraft. Personally, this is a fantastic choice in my opinion for the update. Um, swamps were added way back in alpha version 1.2.0 and since then they've had you know some some minor changes like uh, the water and grass color has changed over time. There were sub biomes like the swamp hills that were added and then removed. Um, Mob spawning rules such as slimes and uh, and drowned have changed over time, and the addition of witch huts and fossils has occurred in that time too. But since then, like a lot of the other biomes in the game, they haven't really had any overhauls, and the the no nothing like the terrain generations that we're seeing now, or the Nether update, like nothing like that has happened to the swamp biome in more recent versions. And it's about time we had some changes to a biome that I mean, I personally avoid building in it. Most people avoid building in it, so it'll be definitely be fun to get a new swamp and overhaul, really good looking swamp, and uh, it'll be fun to try and build with new pallets and mesh buildings or just a full on base into the new swamps. Just as a bit of a side note, it also looks like the developers are trying to change the ambiance of some biomes. So they talk about this in terms of the birch forest with some uh, concept art that I've put on the screen now. Um, and I think they're just planning on changing each biome ever so slightly to give it a bit more of a unique feel and this will kind of specialize each biome and it'll also make the player have to pick specific palettes or more specialized palettes to build in those biomes which I think is a really cool touch because you know right now you can build in a plains biome or a forest biome or a dark oak biome and that they're all pretty similar once you get rid of the trees Whereas if they were to add these different ambiances, like different particle effects or kind of the way that the ground generates, that would be really, that, that'd be a really cool change and it would make building in each biome much more technical and a lot more fun to do. So I think that's a really cool change they're bringing in. Let's move on to the new blocks. Along with the mangrove swamp, there will be a number of new blocks added to the game and they will probably be found in the swamp or crafted from materials found within it. The most prominent types of these is the new wood type, which is the mangrove. Now, it's going to have the same properties as the other woods. Um, it's going to be chopped down with an axe in the same amount of time. It can be crafted into the same items. Um, but it's a new color, a new thing to work with. And I think the textures they've come up with look really, really good. They aren't the exact same as all the other textures for the wood, which that all the other woods are just recolored versions, except for the nether woods. Um, but the mangrove is actually a, a, an entirely new texture, so I really, really like that. I think they should definitely do that. Um, the other thing is the mangrove trees will have some kind of root system, which involves the introduction of another new block, which is the mangrove root. Now, you'll see it on screen now, but it looks like a kind of stringy version of the leaf blocks. And if you've ever been to a place with mangroves, you, you, you'll know what this is like. Like, they have the root systems that are kind of in and out of the water around them. Um, the other thing is the saplings that are required to grow a mangrove have been changed to a propagule. Now propagules are found in real life, they kind of hang off the tree, they, uh, off a mangrove tree, they drop into the water, um, float around for up to a year before they land where they will eventually grow into a mangrove tree. Now this is the same function as in Minecraft except they do not drop off, they have to be picked up by the player and then you can place them either on water or underwater or on land. Um, the player has to harvest them, so you can't chop down a mangrove tree and get them. That you have to willingly go out and look for them, as in on the mangrove tree. Like they don't drop off like normal saplings, kind of thing. The other thing is there will be a new mud block added to the game, and it can be produced by using a bottle of water on a dirt block. 
It also looks like they can be found in the mangrove swamps along with the new mangrove trees. Another new block called the mud brick will be added to the game, uh, which they kind of show off with this house built out of them. Now they're a bit smaller, a bit more compact, uh, which is a pretty good thing to note. Like that it's very similar to how people build with mud bricks in today's world. So very common building material and I'm really glad they're making it out of, or ma making blocks out of it in Minecraft. It's a really, really nice touch. Um, now, I think that they are going to be produced by putting the mud block into a furnace and they're making dried mud with it, uh, which is a bit different to just a normal dirt block. Like compacted mud or dried mud is a bit different to a normal dirt block. And then using that block to craft a mud brick block would be very, very similar to crafting stone bricks, but be a new texture. You could also use it in, uh, well, I'd like to think, um, in a stone cutter. Now, I should just note that that is all conjecture at this point. They haven't specified how we're going to make them. So that's just me putting my ideas out there and kind of saying, this is what I think is going to happen. Um, I also think that it could be really interesting to have like the dried mud convert back to just normal mud if it is placed underwater or if, it's, or if the top of it exposed to, is exposed to the rain. So like you put one in the middle of a field and don't put anything over the top of it. And when it rains, it damages or it, it turns the mud, the dried mud back into a mud block and I think that doing that with mud bricks would also be a really cool feature uh, that'll make it very similar to copper and it'll make it really interesting to build build with because you know you want your nice mud brick building but you also need something to cover it so that could be a really cool feature now the other feature of mud is that it can be used to produce renewable clay finally so to do this you place a mud block on top of a dripstone block and then have like the pointer dripstone off the bottom similar to water or lava production and that will change the mud block into a clay block over time. So this could be definitely done with some sort of redstone system and piss and feed tapes and then that would produce a renewable source of clay for the player. In addition to the new blocks in the swamp it will also introduce two new mobs the frog and the firefly. Now the frog can be found in swamps and it consumes the fireflies. As an amphibian, frogs can both jump around on land, so you can see them jumping on the drip leaf, and they can probably also swim in the water. It, can, it also appears they can be bred just like other passive animals because they're introducing tadpoles, um, which is the offspring of frogs. Now tadpoles are a purely water-based creature. They cannot run around on land, they only have these little tails, which you can probably see now. Um, and they would probably grow up in stages over time to uh, to end up as full fledged, fully fledged frogs. Let's say that ten times fast. Um, in addition to just your normal frog that you're going to find in the swamp, they're also adding another two types of frogs. So they're adding the snowy frogs, which are found in the snow-capped peaks and the tundra, and they're also adding tropical frogs, which I think are found on tropical beaches or beaches that border warm water. So if you remember from 113, warm water, cold water, warm water is that lighter color. That's where the tropical frogs will spawn. Now, all three variants have a different texture from what I can tell, and they're distinguishable, distinguishable from one another. So it could be another fun thing to collect along with your cats and and things like foxes and rabbits. Like, could be a really nice thing to collect and add to some sort of menagerie. I reckon they should also add something that frogs produce when they eat fireflies, such as poop, which can then be used to produce dirt or bone meal in a composter, because we've already got the composters in the game, may as well add something else to it. Uh, and that would also be a much more effective way of producing renewable dirt than our current method of bone mealing azalea on top of dirt and then having the azalea or the, the rooted dirt get pushed out and moved over to a place where it is blown up into not like that, that that's just boring and, and not really the most fun and it takes a long time so this could be a much much more effective way to produce renewable dirt than our current method of doing so moving on from the swamp now it has also been confirmed that the addition of the deep dark will be moved from the 1.18 caves and cliffs part 2 update to the 1.19 wild update which has been speculated for a little while uh, i'd assume this has something to do with doing the idea a lot of justice and really flesh out the concepts with exists uh, with exciting and bug free features which you know that's something that we need in minecraft like i'd rather have a really flesh out and really cool idea that is really really well done and just takes a little bit longer than something that's kind of half baked and not really you know that great um and you know they, they've definitely made the right decision in this uh, i i i'd much rather have it 
perfect than, you know, just come out as a half-baked idea. So, really glad that's being moved to 119 so they can work on it a bit more. And yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely the right move. Um, now, we've, we already know what the Skulk Sensor is, and the Water Mob, and the existence of the biome, so I won't cover that in this video. However, 119 will introduce an entire Skulk family within the Deep Dark, and an entirely new structure to the game, which is something that has been missing for a really, really long time. The Skulk family of blocks will include the previously known Skulk Sensor, the Skulk Shrieker, the Skulk Catalyst, and what appears to be kind of some sort of Skulk Block and Skulk Vines, or Vine similar things. The most prominent of these is the Skulk Catalyst, which produces a new, uh, which produces the Skulk Sensor, the Skulk Block, or the Vine whenever a mob is killed by the player in some sort of unspecified radius around it. The Skulk Shrieker is another block that is activated by the Skulk Sensor when a player or mob walks past it and produces this sound. It also applies a new darkness effect to the player, which appears to be similar to blindness, although I would assume that it has its own properties, uh, kind of different to blind, like it has that pulsing effect that you might be able to see. Uh, and you can't see anything when it's at full blackness, not even your inventory, so I think that's a really, really cool uh, a really cool effect that we could add to the game. Uh, the last two blocks, the Skulk Block and the Skulk Vines, which is what I'm calling them, weren't really discussed during Minecraft Live, and I don't know much about them, but it was shown that when you break them without Silk Touch, they drop XP orbs, which is a really cool idea, um, and then when they use Silk Touch, um, they drop themselves, so, you know, very similar to other blocks that just disappear when you don't use Silk Touch. Uh, it's a very interesting property, and I, it could definitely be another way of storing XP, which would be a really, really cool thing. Like, currently our only way of storing XP is in furnaces or in bottles of enchanting. So, you know, having this around a, a mob farm, and then the player collects their XP whenever when they need to, not when... Sorry, they, they, they farm for a while, they don't have 5,000 levels, and then the, all those levels are stored in the Skulk, and they pick them up when they want to. So that, that's a really interesting property, and I want to see that with the entire family of the blocks. So I really look forward to having a bit of a play around with those and see what I can do with them redstone-wise and building-wise when 1.19 is released. But now we're going on to the big one. A new structure is being added to the game of Minecraft. It's been so long coming. It's been a really long time. 1.14 was the last time we had a new structure added to the game. That was the Pillager Outpost. But this is the new, the biggest new structure that we've we've seen since the fortress got added, or the the ocean monument. They were a really long time ago, in like one eight or one ten or something. A really, really long time. Now these new structures are called the Deep Dark Cities, and they are ho the home of the new Skulk Blocks and the Warden Mob, which I've discussed earlier. In the clip shown, they also appear to be constructed out of different types of te deep slate, and they're honestly the most beautiful natural structure I have seen in the game of Minecraft so far. They're well detailed, they have a, a really diverse yet very well matching block palette that varies the texture of the structure, and candles are placed sporadically that break up the dark walls with bright colours and new textures. I love it! It looks so so good. I've not seen a natural structure that looks this good in a very, very long time that isn't up... Well, I've never seen a natural structure that looks this good that hasn't been upgraded by a player. So, very, very well done, Mojang developers. It, it looks absolutely beautiful. You've done a phenomenal job. I cannot wait to explore this thing myself. It, uh, I just can't wait for this update. Like the, Adding the deep dark in this new structure is going to be a game changer for Minecraft. I'm really, really looking forward to putting it in. So very well done Mojang developers. I love this. Now, the developers also stated that there will be some sort of structure that is universal in the center of every deep dark city. They're not going to spoil it, but players can explore it for themselves and it kind of gives the structure a purpose and meaning inside the lore of Minecraft. Now, this is something that's not really been done much before. The, the stronghold in the end kind of has a little bit of lore, like who built the end cities and who built the nether fortresses and why are the uh, strongholds even in existence. But adding something that is specifically lore-based and that the players can kind of come to a consensus on or use in their own stories for their own bases or their own builds is a really, really cool idea. And it's not been done very well in the game before, but from what I understand, they're going to do a really good job with it. And this is what I mean about 
doing the idea of the deep dark justice like having a new structure that adds law to the game and fleshing that entire idea out over the course of a couple of years it's it's absolutely phenomenal i i have to give all the props to the mojang developers here they've done an incredible job with coming up with this new idea so you know i'm so looking forward to seeing this appear in the actual natural minecraft world so that's all of the 1.19 update announcements that we know about um it's going to be a phenomenal update i'm really looking re forward to it it's it <laughs> We overhaul a lot of things now, um, or we've seen a lot of overhauls, like the Nether update, overhaul the Nether. The Oceans update, overhaul the Oceans. The fact that we're starting to overhaul, or see biomes be overhauled, is really, really cool, and I'm really liking it. Um, it's, it's just going to be a really cool new update with new features and new mobs, uh, and more things to explore, which I'm really looking forward to. But, you're probably wondering, what about the mob vote? Well, in 1.19, the Allay will be joining us in Minecraft, ready to use by the casual player as an item collector or by Redstone Fanatics as a new exciting storage system. Now, I went over my thoughts on this mob and the other two mobs in the previous video, so go and check those out if you need any more information on the Allay. Thank you all very much for watching this video. It's been a bit of a long one for me to make, but it's been good. So, thank you all very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Have a good one. On a bit more of a personal note, this video has been a bit of a pain for me to make. So I live uh, in Australia on the East Coast, and it was 2.20 in the morning when Minecraft Live happened. So it's been, a, uh, what time, oh my god, it's been 12 hours. Um, it's been a long one for me to make, and it, I haven't even edited it yet because I've been doing uni work, so I have exams in like two weeks. So, yeah, sorry sorry that this is so late compared to the other, the other YouTubers that are out there, um, but... I, I, need, I have other stuff that I need to do, <laughs> um, so hopefully that's not too bad, I hope you enjoy the video, um, I, I, I really enjoy looking at these new updates and seeing what Mojang can come up with, they're a really, really creative organisation, they've done a lot of really cool stuff, like, who could have thought five different nether biomes, what, <laughs> who, like, they, they've done a really good job with it, and I really, really like what they're adding to the game, so, I, I thought I should make this video and kind of outline my thoughts on it. Uh, if you want me to do more stuff on 119, leave a comment below and I will get back to it in a bit. Thank you all very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one!